This is a Melinda Burger episode on FCG Crafted and this is the last episode on how to create the ultimate terrain material in Blender that produces realistic terrains. The last episode we created the node tree for the two displacement textures that we can use and now we will finish this by creating the mask for the actual materials which will consist of rocks and grass. The best thing is that for scenes where the mountain isn't too close, we don't even have to use any grass material as the displacement gives us so much variation and detail that the grass won't seem plain and weird. Of course nobody is stopping you from adding grass material if you want. Anyway, let's think this through. We need two principal shaders for the cliffside and the grass. So let's add these shaders. Now we need to load the textures for the cliffside. As always, I will share an example texture that we use in the scene, but you can use your own textures for this too. I'm using Ctrl Shift T to enable the automatic principal shader setup, which is a part of the Node Wrangler add on and navigate to my textures. Then I'm gonna add them, and this is it. I will use a green texture for the grass, something like this. I will bump up the roughness to 0.72 and the specular will be greatly reduced. Okay, this seems not too ugly. Okay, now just like with the displacement texture, we need to have a mask that mixes these textures. And what else could be better than just to use our already created mask shader? For further control, I will duplicate one of the displacement node groups and put them up here. We don't need the displacement texture for this, so delete it. We only need this one with the color ramp. I will change the color ramp. and then change them turn the math node into a power node let's turn this value up to 0.6 and this will be good. Now let's connect the power output to a mix shader factor and plug the principal shaders into the mix shader. The mix shader should be connected to surface and let's see how this turns out. We need to plug the mixed displacement textures into this node. The 0.1 strength should be more than enough normally. Strong displacement will result in very spike and all looking terrain. If you haven't seen the first episode or you thought, you can get away with applying the scale after resizing the terrain despite me clearly telling you not to do that, that this is the time 
when you should start to experiment with the height for the displacement. Uh, this is because relative to the small original size of the terrain, uh, which is basically what, maybe 1 or 2 meters wide, a uh, 0.9 displacement will be very strong. But if you are using this for a terrain that is hundreds of meters uh, wide, and you apply the scale, then the displacement will be too small and will be wholly noticeable. But if you follow my tutorial, 0.1 or anything very close to it should be perfect. Actually, you will need even less strength for the displacement, as you will see at the end of the episode. Ok, now let's plug the displacement output into the displacement input of the output node. Oh, that was a real sentence, what the heck. Anyways, until now we haven't used the beautiful adaptive subdivision to its maximum potential. We haven't even used any of its real potential because it didn't change jack poop. We need to come over here to the materials tab and here look for the displacement tab and the settings under it. By default this is set to bump only. That's the very lonely default setup and the same as the setup if we haven't changed the future set to experimental in the first episode. This means we did this all for nothing. Well, not really nothing, I would call it something, as it's easy to change this into displacement only mode, and this is when the adaptive subdivision starts to shine. And this is when I start to sweat and cross my fingers the nose setup works nicely, because after this point, by developing the texture set, I had a lot of trouble fine-tuning everything. See, the problem was that we set this up compared to the basic terrain, but when we do the final render, the displacement and adaptive subdivision completely changes everything. And thanks to that, the color ramps might need to be adjusted, or even the strength of the displacement node. Also, this will slow down the loading time, because Blender is subdividing the mesh in the background every time you do a render, in the preview window, or a normal test render. I will see how this turned out, and will update the values if they need to be updated. And I'm back. This seems interesting, the texture was too strong for the shaders, so what you need to do is turn down the global strength of the displacement even more, so in case if you load your own textures and have a problem like this, just change this value and it should fix everything. So this works perfectly now, you can load any textures and use the math node to change the strength and spikiness or the global displacement strength on the displacement node the same way I did. That's the ultimate terrain shader, you can check it out on CG Trader. I hope you found this tutorial series useful and it uh, helped you with how the node setup process works. Don't forget to share this video and click on the little bell to see my newest videos and Blender tutorials if you subscribe. Also, you can check out my CG Trader, I sell some models there and have free ones to download.